an exhibition game. We're still 0-0. Zero zero. Did some good things, but got to get better tomorrow. Got to keep growing. Um, it's fun to play back at, at home. Fun to play in front of the fans. What specifically was, was better for you tonight than maybe the first exhibition game? I, I'm sorry? I said, what was better for you tonight than um, playing the first exhibition game? Probably the biggest thing that sticks out is that we had to talk a lot, especially at halftime, about doing some different stuff in the second 20. Uh, I thought that, that uh, Central Florida did a really good job of taking us out of what we were trying to run. Obviously, they're in the spectrum of playing at Charlotte. Um, different type tempo, different type athleticism, uh, extension defensively, ability, disruption defensively, you know, ability to turn you over and block shots. And, uh, as opposed to Charlotte being heavy gap oriented and, and um, very position oriented. Um, thought we did a much better job in the second <coughs> half attacking them defensively and setting our defense. We did a really poor job in the first half in transition defense, especially off of makes. Did a better job uh, early second half. All five starters finishing double figures. You guys topped the 100 point mark. Is that the kind of offense you think this team can be? Um, I don't know that we'll score 114 again. It, it was a, it was a really fast tempo. We shot it well. Central Florida is better than that. Um, they're they're good every year. Um, we made shots. We were really good in the offensive glass, of course. And then we got some. Thought we made some really good interior passes. Uh, we got the foul line, of course, uh, as well. But um, shot the three well and, and finished at the rim. You know, Santo and, and Ace, uh, uh, R.J. Godfrey, they just. I didn't even study these uh, these stats. I haven't had an opportunity, but to just finish, have an ability to finish at a high clip uh, in the paint. Productive night from Silas, and he got going in the second half scoring wise. Just what did you see from Silas tonight? What I loved was his urgency early second half defensively. He set the tone. We're going to be better <coughs> defensively. He's second 20. Um, he was a winning player, you know, tonight as he as he is very very often. He's getting better and better. And then uh, I'm glad that he got to see it going for for himself a little bit. He's worked really hard on the stroke, and it's gotten better and better. Um, six assists, one turnover. I think at halftime, still finished with six, but only two turnovers against all that disruption. He played really well. What did you make of Blue Kane's effort tonight? It's good. Um, we got to be less risky defensively, all of us. And he was involved with a couple of those plays, but he's playing hard. He's flying around and um, made some shots, what, five or six. Um, Pretty good plus minus for him. He, he did some good things. He's he's really improved in some areas from last year, as as have um, uh, Dylan and uh, and Silas. It's it's nice to see those three guys they come back as sophomores, um, and who knows what their roles will be, whether they'll be identical to late last season or not. You know, Dylan came off the bench tonight, but these guys are just better players. You know, Dylan made a couple of big plays. It just shows how hard he's worked at it. It seemed like Tyron was really effective driving to the and, basket. Do you yeah. feel like that is a huge you know, asset of the way he needs to play in this offense? Yeah, I, you know, he he played probably as well as, as anyone. You know, now that I look at these stats, um, Blue Kane stats pop off the sheet, of course, but um, Tyron getting downhill, his efficiency, uh, and, and him moving a 2 4 assist to zero turnovers, I thought he was disruptive defensively. He has hands on a lot of basketballs. He looked fast. You know, he looked explosive and gives us a threat to make shots and, and get down and put pressure on the rim as well. Where do you see his experience on, on a day in, day out basis in this program? Uh, poise, he's, he's been good late clock his, and late game his whole career. And he made a couple plays tonight and he does in practice too, late shot clock. And we don't really <coughs> want to play late, late shot clock. Most teams in our league don't, but the defenses in our league are so Good. I mean, there's so many of them that we're going to be forced to play late clock at times. And he's just, he's got confidence, he's got poise, he doesn't get sped up, and uh, that showed tonight. How close was Dakota to going, and do you anticipate he'll be available for the opener? Uh, I would think so. Yeah, I, I think he's pretty close. He's just, uh, especially this time of year, if we're not at 100 or close to 100%, um, he's just got to get healthy. But we, Forward to getting him back, he's he's a little bit different than these other guards, and, and right there in the conversation to be, uh, you know, to, to to potentially play a, a lot of minutes, he gives us even more depth. And there's been certain, as I said on the radio, there's been certain practices where one of these guys has been the best guard, and there's been certain practices where Dakota's arguably the best guard that practice. And this one, you know, you've got some good depth.
Um, he's a talented guy. We look forward to getting back. Speaking of that depth, how excited are you about the depth you have on this team this year? Really excited. Um, we've got talented guys, uh, bigger, faster, longer, stronger, um, really competitive. Um, probably the, the most fun about the whole thing is the fact that be shocked if we don't have a good practice tomorrow. You know, and the, the best teams I've been around, it's, it's a good starting point. These guys will come to work tomorrow. Silas, Blue, Dylan, and even these young guys, it's a little bit abnormal. It's a little bit unique in that Asa Newell and Santo Surreal will come to practice tomorrow with a little bit of a chip, understanding hey, we gotta continue to get better and there's certain things that uh, you know I may not have done well and I've gotta correct. And just a pretty healthy maturity uh, for this team overall. Again, we haven't won a real game yet, but I, I like this team in practice. I look forward to practice tomorrow. Is there anything in particular you want to clean up between now and that season? Over? Transition defense, of course, uh, handling some of that pressure in the half court versus some of that disruption. And we'll probably have to try to be creative with how we give each other those looks defensively because that's not really what we're doing uh, defensively. But in preparation of certain teams like that, there's a few of those in our league. Um, Being able to being able to um, execute a, a set call, I thought we did a really good job in, in some of our continuity, playing downhill and playing off of misses in, in space. But uh, we got to clean up again, especially for some of that pressure, some of the half court stuff that we tried to run. Just how much does stuff change from preseason practice to when the lights are on for real? You know, it shouldn't. It's just my philosophy on it. Uh, who knows? We're all we're all different, but uh, we preach. Uh, you know, first practice of June is just as important as, as tomorrow's practice, which is just as important as when we play at Georgia Tech and, and host an SEC team. Um, tonight, you know, we talked about, we'd like to see at the end of the game, us having more points at Central Florida, but most importantly, we want to see some growth in some areas. The response again to the second half was a, was a big positive. The way our guys pulled for one another, the fact that we didn't take bad shots, you know, um, those are good starting points for us. We shared it. You know they're they're all important. They're all these practices and all these all these games are opportunities to develop. Do you see your ability to protect the rim defensively? Oh my goodness! Is that like a consistent day in day out thing? <clears throat> um, yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I don't want to sit here and act like we're elite in that category. We just I think we fit more now in the SEC. You know, there's there's so many talented defensive teams in this league, and and we've got to max out defensively. There's a lot of mistakes that we've made. Sometimes we weren't where we were supposed to be. Um, sometimes we didn't block out quite as aggressively, specifically the last five or six minutes of the game. We didn't finish those stops. Our urgency and transition, I could go on and on. Our ball, our ball screen coverage was really good at times. At times there was um, you know, some let up there, some miscommunication there. But talent, the ceiling of our defense, led by that ability with size on the perimeter and size on the interior, uh, to block and alter shots and turn you over a little bit is just um, it's better uh, it's better than um, I've been associated with in the last three or four years so it's uh, it's exciting to know that we could be a good defensive team that said your mindset and your mentality and your approach every single day is a big factor in that so we'll see again this was just an exhibition game how much more do you learn about your team playing against a power conference opponent as opposed to the mid-major that you played earlier? Um, we got exposed in some areas, so um, it, you, you get a chance to learn more just playing the, the, the higher level teams you play, the more you're going to be shown what you've got to work on. Any other questions for Mike? Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Coach. Yeah.